Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, and this is an awful lot of podcasts in 17.2, so get out your equation sheet or look it up online and get your uh, reduction potential sheet, too. You're going to need it. So line notation is a short way to do the whole beaker cell thing, all that other stuff. Um, equation delta G, which is Gibbs free energy for spontaneity. And Fe, bunch of constants, constant, constant. Nernst, which is a happy equation. Um, electrolysis, which we talked about, is the reverse reaction for it. And just enough volts for electrolysis to get it to work. A um, little amp fun, um, Faraday's, and a bunch of sample problems. So let's hop right into it. Okay, so give the line notation for a copper, one, silver, uh, so, reduction potentials for those things are. So, what I'm going to do first, of course, is write out these guys. So, copper um, plus one plus one electron makes copper, and silver plus one plus one electron makes silver. And I'm going to look up their voltages. So, sorry, this is me trying to find them. Silver is 0 0.80, 0 0.80 volts, and copper is... Copper one, copper uh, 0.52 volts. So they're both positive, but one of them still has to be flipped. So I'm going to flip this one um, because that way I'll still have a positive voltage. So let me change colors to make my life a little easier. So copper yields copper plus one, plus one electron, minus 0.52 volts. And then that'll work. So the line notation is going to be anode to cathode, and it's going to be reactants to products. So my anode, anode is oxidation, oxidation is loss of electrons. So this is my anode. So I'm going to have copper, and I change the state of matter, I put a line. And then I have copper plus one, and then I'm going to change cell. So if I were to have this drawn old school, this double line that I'm making right here represents the two different beakers. And then I'm going to end up with the reactant of the next one, which is silver, Ag positive, and a single line because I changed the state of matter, Ag. So a single line represents a change in state. A double line represents a change in ode. Now, sometimes you don't have a change in state, so if I had, um, for example, copper plus 2 to copper plus 1, there's no change in state there, so I put a comma and then a double line. So, all the crazy things I can do for that one. All right, delta G equals negative NFE. Spontaneous reactions has a negative delta G. Remember, if delta G is negative, it's spontaneous. Galvanic spontaneous reactions have a positive E naught. N is the moles of electrons transferred. So it's basically a plug and chug guy, and a Faraday is a constant in coulombs per mole. Copper plus 2 with an aluminum, so copper plus 2, which by the way would be aluminum plus 3, um, the moles transferred would be 6, not 2, because it would be copper plus 2 plus 2 electrons, and aluminum plus 3 plus 3 electrons, it is the least common multiple, which would be 6. Silver is a plus 1 guy, sodium is a plus 1 guy, their N is 1. And then you can do that calculations. So, yippee. Calculate delta G for a copper 2 silver galvanic cell from the first slide, which I forgot already. Uh, okay, so delta G equals negative NFE. So I think I figured out the E before. So 0.80 and negative 0.52 is, I can't believe I'm using a calculator. 0.28. So my voltage, my E naught is 0.28. So 0.28. Uh, Faraday's are 96,500. And I had copper 2 and silver. So the least common multiple of copper 2 and silver is 2. Throw in a negative sign right there. And then ask your calculator. So negative 2 times 96,500 um, times second so answer is negative 5404. And that would be joules, or 5,000 kilojoules. Isn't that nifty? Nernst equation is nice if we're, we can change the voltage by changing some other things. So the temperature can affect the voltage. R is a constant, sad. Um, Faraday is constant, sad. 
same equation, n is going to be a constant, which is sad. This, remember, is at standard conditions, which is sad. So you can change it by changing the temperature or changing q. Okay, so for the Q part, and remember Q is the same as before, Q, the like KQ, allows you to change the concentration, so it's products over reactants raised to the coefficients, but if you haven't noticed, when we do these things, and I've drawn this a dozen times already, one of my reactants is always a solid, maybe not always, but it's usually a solid. And then E naught is from the sheet, which, you know, you do the little subtraction things, a little minus, it makes you happy. Um, and temperature needs to be in Kelvins. And 96,500 is Coulombs. So let's hop to it. Um, when reaction is at equilibrium, E is zero. So old batteries don't die, they just reach equilibrium. So if you're at equilibrium, that means the electrons are flowing both ways at the same rate which means that there's a net change of nothing. Oh, how sad. So it's important to know that when a reaction is at equilibrium, E is zero. So 10 plus 2 silver ions makes 10 plus 2 plus 2 silvers. Calculate the standard voltage of a cell involving the system above. Use your sheet. That was kind of a cheesy little helper there. So I will do SN. Well, let me look at the 10 thing. So 10... I'm going from 10 to 10 plus 2. Mm -hmm. 10 to 10 plus 2. Okay, so 10 plus 2 plus 2 electrons is negative 0.14. So this is doing the opposite of that. So the 10 part is positive 0.14. And the silver part is, and that's silver ion, yeah. So that's just the way it's written is positive 0.80. By the way, this one was flipped from what I saw on the chart. Um, so calculate the standard voltage of a cell involving the system above. So that would be 0.94 volts. What is the equilibrium constant for the system above? Oh, what was that equation again? Uh, I forgot. Log K equals NE.0592. Oh, good luck me remembering that one. Log K equals N E over 0.0592. I think I remembered it, but I think there might be a negative in there. Nope, N E 0.0592. N E 0.0592. Okay, so the number of electrons transferred is 2, right? So log K, this is me writing too big, 2 times 0.94 over 0.0592. So, clear, 2 times 0.94 divided by 0.0592 is 31.7 equals log k. So then k is 10 to the 31.7. Wow, that's huge. And you know what? That means that um, the reaction proceeds very far to the right. So it'll make an awful lot of products and not many reactants will be left. So second log second answer, and I have 5.71 E31. And K, remember, you get to be unitless if it makes you happy. Electrolysis, a cell that is non-spontaneous, has a negative E value. You can hook up a power source that has more volts than your negative value, and silver plating does this. So all you do is you just out-muscle it. So if you've got something that will push electrons right here with just, say, 0.94 volts, push your electron this way. Well, if you've got something that'll push electrons at 0.95 volts going the other way, you're losing. And electrons are going this way. Okay. An amp is a coulomb per second. A Faraday is 96,500 coulombs per mole. Calculate the amount of time required to produce 1,000 grams of magnesium by electrolysis of molten magnesium chloride using a current of 50 amps. So this basically is one big Mac Daddy times dividing bar thing. So I'll start with my 1,000 grams, except for I only wrote 100, 1,000 grams of magnesium. And I'm going to change that into moles. So 24.3 grams of magnesium and one mole. That's my go to the periodic table number, times dividing bar. And then notice here we're looking at electrons. One mole of magnesium will give me two moles of electrons. 
and an amp is a coulomb per second, and a Faraday is 96,500 coulombs per mole, and that's per mole of electrons. So that means that if I want to cancel moles, I will put one mole down here and 96,500 coulombs. All right. So then an amp is a coulomb per second, so that means 50 amps would be 50 coulombs per one second. Okay. So notice grams of magnesium, grams of magnesium, moles of magnesium, moles of magnesium, moles of electrons. One mole of electrons is 96,500 coulombs. Okay. Um, yeah, so that cancels there. My coulombs cancel and my seconds cancel, and I get out my calculator. So what is really hard to read is that it's still 1,000, not 100, divided by 24.3 times 2 times 96,500 divided by 50 is a lot. Um, 158847. Um, that would be seconds, and if it asked, then I can make this a little bit easier. Um, I will go 159,000 seconds. All right, three sig figs, baby, gotta love it, and I do. Chromium plus three aqueous solution is electrolyzed using current of 7.6 amps. What mass of chromium is plated after two days? Okay. So I have 7.60 amps, and I have two days. And my 2.00 days, I know I'm going to have to turn into seconds. So 2.00 days times dividing bar. One day is 24 hours. And then one hour is 60 minutes. Eh, one hour is 3,600 seconds. So that gives me a decent starting point. So 2 times 24 times 3,600 is 172800 seconds. And I want to figure out what mass is plated out. So, and I'm doing chromium 3, so that means N is going to be 3, so 3 moles of electrons. So 172800 seconds. And an amp is a coulomb per second. So that means 7.60 coulombs per 1 second. And then a coulomb is there's 96,500 coulombs in one mole of electrons. And then there are three moles of electrons in one mole of chromium. Then one mole of chromium would be, oh, I don't know, the mass of chromium. Oh, hold on. Uh, 52.00 grams, and it says what mass? Yeah, there we go. So, 17,280 seconds, whatever I said, times 7.6 divided by 96,500 divided by 3 times 52 is 235, 236 grams. I like these problems, because it's just a little times dividing bar brings you back to the old stoichiometry fun. Last problem we're going to do, but it looks like it's a long one, if it'll change. Zinc, nickel, nickel, zinc. Ooh. Identify metal and metal 2 in the diagram and specify the initial concentration of the metal plus 2 solution. <sighs> really? I don't know how you do that. Indicate which of the metal electrodes is the cathode. Write the balance equation for the reaction. <laughs> looks like it's spontaneous. <laughs> Metal plus 2 solution. I have no way of knowing what this metal plus 2 solution would be. I'm going to say 1 molar because I would say it's probably a standard one and I probably chopped this off of somewhere. So I've got zinc and I've got nickel. So let me look at my equation sheet to see what zinc is. Zinc plus 2 plus 2 electrons is 0.76. So I need to flip it because I have zinc. Um, so it's positive 0.76 for zinc the way that it's written here. Nickel plus 2, nickel, 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 nickel plus 2 to nickel is, we have plus 2 to nickel, so the nickel plus 2 part is negative 0.25. So, so, oh, the way that it's written. I guess I didn't need to really do that, did I? Um, indicate which of the metal electrodes is the cathode. So the cathode is red cat. So reduction happens at the cathode. So reduction is where... Um, reduction is gain of electrons. So nickel plus 2 gained electrons to do this. So nickel 
is at the cathode. So I guess I'll call this the cathode. Yeah, because anode is where the electrons start. So nickel and zinc. <laughs> Write the balanced equation for the reaction that occurs in half cell containing the cathode. So red cat, so that's the reduction one. So nickel plus two plus two electrons gives me nickel. What would be the effect on the cell voltage if the concentration of zinc plus two was reduced to 0.1 molar in the half cell? So this is where I'm going to use my Nernst equation, which is E equals E naught. Uh, is it plus or minus? Sorry, I've got to double check. Minus RT, I thought it was. Minus RT over NF LNQ. LN, now it's going to be LNQ. My products are going to be zinc plus 2 over nickel plus 2. I left the other ones out of it. Okay, so if we started out with everything at 1 molar, then we get to move on with that. So what would the effect on the cell voltage be if zinc plus 2 was reduced to 0.1 molar in the half cell containing the, that electron? So what's going to happen is instead of being LN of 1, all right, so the natural log of 1 is 0. But the natural log of if it becomes 0.1 over 1, that's 0.1. So natural log of 0.1 is negative 2.3. So what's going to happen is... Um, oh, I want more room. Um, hmm. Okay, I guess I need to insert a slide here. Sorry. So E equals E naught, which was point. Uh, what was it? Uh, point five one. Five one minus R eight point three one four. T, 298, it's at 25, we assumed it was standard con conditions, over N, I think we had an N of 2, didn't we? Yeah. And then F is 96,500, LN, 0.1. So the original voltage was 0.1. This new voltage is going to be whatever E is. So I'm going to do this guy first. 8.314 times 298 divided by 2, divided by 96,500. Enter, times, natural log of 0.1. Enter, so it's 0.51 minus negative 0.0296. And I have 0.53, whatever. 0.540. So the voltage goes up. Now, that's one way to do it with the Nernst equation. The other way to do it is if you increase, or if you're decreasing this, according to Le Chatelier's principle, you're removing a product. If you're removing a product, it will shift, equilibrium will shift to go to the right, which would make the cell more spontaneous. Describe what happened to the cell voltage. The cell voltage is removed. Um, voltage goes to zero. Um, because the electrons can't flow anymore. So, the equation sheet is your friend. If you see amps, get ready to do a times dividing problems and do lots of AP problem types, and we will. Yay. Talk to you later.